From Sarasota Memorial, this is HealthCast. A healthy dose of information from experts you can trust. Hi, everyone. Welcome to HealthCast. I'm Allison Warren. In light of the local, national, and international coverage of the COVID-19 pandemic, this is going to be a special episode of HealthCast focusing on that COVID-19 pandemic, and more specifically, Sarasota Memorial Hospital's response. We're also going to talk about the recent reopening of the elective surgeries or non-emergent surgeries. Our guest today is Dr. James Fiorica, Chief Medical Officer at Sarasota Memorial Hospital. Dr. Fiorica, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Allison. So we've heard so much about COVID-19 and how different communities and different hospitals have responded. So can you start by taking us back to the beginning and how Sarasota Memorial Hospital's initial response when the virus came to our community has shifted to what we're seeing now? So I received a call, it must have been the end of February, beginning of March, from our epidemiologist. Um, the physician, Dr. Gordillo, actually called me and he says, I'd like to meet with you and talk about something going on in China and see how we should prepare for it. So I said, okay, who else should be there? And there were about half a dozen leaders. There was, uh, there was our epidemiologist, there was a head of infection control, there was myself, the chief nursing officer, and we actually met and we learned about Wuhan, China. We talked about it. We said it seems a long ways away, but we ought to be prepared. We ought to talk about equipment. We ought to talk about a process. Um, so we actually, at that point in time, we set a bit larger meeting at the hospital in, in, in early March. And that in early March, we sort of met with all the various parts of the hospital. And it was almost like a hurricane preparedness so it seemed like that it seemed very straightforward it seemed like we could handle this it was preparing for a hurricane that we have several every year as you know and we met we met um, as a group and there were probably about 20 of us uh, leaders in each of their departments and not just medical leaders or nursing leaders but uh, plan operations leaders uh, basically everybody in the hospital that would be involved in hurricane preparedness for emergency operations. And we talked about equipment and we sort of talked about it similar to Ebola preparation years ago when we prepared for that. Do we have equipment? Where's the equipment? What do we do? But it was all hypothetical uh, because it really hadn't hit the U.S. yet. Um, and so we, we just sort of hypothetically said, if this happens, do we have this? And so we divided into teams and we talked about education. Within two weeks of that, it became very real. So then we set up a command center because then we realized not only is it in the U.S., we're going to have it in Florida very soon. There had not been no episodes in Florida. And so then our education and training really kicked into gear. We made sure we had not only did we have the equipment, um, everybody worked together at teaching and training and, and putting on the protective gear. And it went, it went very well. Um, as it evolved, we sort of talked about how do you communicate? Communication became a big thing, uh, and all our leaders communicated, and, and it went from there. This has certainly been an ever-changing, ever-developing, ever-evolving situation. So how has the team been able to keep up, and, and what challenges has Sarasota Memorial Hospital faced? There's been many all along. It's a very unusual virus. Um, it was totally different from anything anyone's experienced before. You know, you do your education, you do your medical training, you learn how to do surgery and to perform an operation, you learn how to treat an infection with antibiotics, you learn about viruses and vaccinations. But all of a sudden you have a new virus that you don't know about. You don't know how it's gonna react. You don't know how long it's gonna be there. Uh, you don't know how it's exposed. You don't know its type of exposure. And it was different from anything else. And that's where all the education and communication changed. As we learned it, we had to disseminate to everybody at the hospital. And we had to do that multiple times throughout a week. So that's where we had to, to make sure everybody was on the same page. We had to have strict, strict, tight communication multiple times a day amongst us and communicating to the staff. You work so closely with the clinical folks who are treating these COVID-19 patients, the nurses, the doctors, every single person involved in the care of that COVID-19 patient. Can you talk about their response to this pandemic from the time we knew it was in our community to now? The, the staff has been incredible. I mean, truly, truly incredible. They have sort of gone overboard to make sure their patients are safe. 
and in return, we want to make sure they're safe. So that's been our goal is to make sure safety has been our forefront. And really they have, they have not hesitated to go in to see and treat that patient. They've been empathetic to the patient, to the family members, to everyone involved, and, and they would do anything to help treat and fix that patient at all parts of the hospital. And, and I don't just mean the doctors and nurses, I mean every part of the hospital system has truly gone overboard, just turning the rooms over and getting them cleaned and getting ready for a patient to come in. Uh, having the equipment, going overboard, just the supply chain, doing everything they can do to make sure we have enough equipment uh, so our hospital is safe. Just plant operations, make sure our ventilation systems are appropriate and up to speed. Things that, things that you do every day, but it's a whole different type of, of it, uh, when you're in overdrive, making sure it's all happening nicely and everybody pulled together, did a nice job. Obviously, many people were scared when they saw the reports coming out of the hot spots, places like New York, California, Washington State. Uh, but can you talk about what Sarasota Memorial Hospital has seen in terms of COVID-19 patients? So we've, it's evolved and, and we've watched it evolve and, and we wanted to be proactive at every step along the way. We wanted to learn what was happening in, in China. We wanted to learn what was happening in Europe. We wanted to learn what was happening in other parts of the United States. And we wanted to try to stay ahead of it. And, and that's exactly what we've, we've tried to do. And we've been fortunate enough to stay ahead of it at every step along the way. And, and our, we, we seem to have flattened our curve right now. But we're watching these other, these other cities. We're watching New York. We're watching how they, they reopen different parts of the United States. And we want to do it cautiously. We want to open up the hospital. We want to open up Sarasota in a safe and cautious way. So even though the major hospital surge didn't happen here, how did SMH prepare for that possibility of seeing like what we did in New York or Washington State? How did we prepare for that even though we didn't have it? Well, when we first set up our command center, we actually said where the patient's going to be housed. Uh, what's our negative pressure rooms look like? How many do we have? How many ICUs do we have? How many can we have? How many ventilators can we have? How do we make sure we have adequate staffing, not just equipment? So each of the various specialties sort of pulled together and said, how can we make this happen? Can we convert what is normally a 60-bed ICU hospital into a 110-bed ICU hospital with ventilators? Can we, can we make that happen? And, and we actually did have the ability to do that. Fortunately, we haven't needed it but we have had the ability to do, do that and try to stay ahead of the game. Fortunately, we didn't need it. Overall, Sarasota Memorial Hospital did see big changes to the patient census while elective surgeries were canceled or postponed. Can you tell us a little bit about that change and how it affected the hospital? Well, it's like anything. You, don't, you want safety is your biggest focus. Your, your patient safety and your employee and staff safety is your, really your biggest focus. And there's no question that census went down. When we stopped elective surgeries and elective admissions, uh, we did it for safety reasons. We didn't want unnecessary people exposed until we had a safe mechanism to bring people back in. Now that we know we have, have a safe mechanism, we've actually looked at how our how our patients that come in COVID positive and their contacts, and, and we've looked through all that part of part of the patients that are coming into the hospital, uh, how protected they are, and time after time, they are, they are safe, our staff is safe. Uh, we looked at our equipment and our protective gear, and that seems to be very, very safe. And so now we're at the next step as we've flattened the curve in our area, can we open up elective surgeries? And we said, if we're gonna do that, let's open up the hospital. Um, there are patients out there that need surgeries, Let's do it, and let's do it in a safe and, and cautious way. Uh, the way the hospital did it to make the hospital safe is we took multiple areas of precautions. Everybody has masks that walk in the building. Everybody has a temperature check that walks in the building. Everybody is uh, has policies. We've developed policies that if they have symptoms, they can't come to work. Uh, we have policies that protect the patient and the employees. We've limited our visitors, not because we want to. That was probably the hardest thing, believe it or not, was limiting limiting visitors uh, and, uh, for their for the patients in the hospital. That that was, I would have to say, our toughest decision. But again, we're doing it to protect the patients in the hospital and the employees and staff to really limit the 
the number of people in the hospital to to what is actually needed, trying to minimize uh, infection. Sarasota Memorial Hospital has been a leader and worked very closely with local and state leaders in discussion of reopening that we're now starting to see in Florida. So what did you feel needed to be in place to make Sarasota Memorial Hospital ready for that reopening of elective procedures? I wanted to make sure we were doing everything possible that any other major facility uh, in the U.S. was doing. I wanted to make sure that everything we did at Sarasota Memorial Hospital was in line with other cities like Tampa, uh, Miami, Orlando. Uh, we had calls, conference calls. There's, there's, there's multiple areas. We have state uh, conference calls. Uh, we have, I have chief medical officer calls with other hospitals around the state of Florida. We have them every week. I wanted to make sure we were in constant communication and, 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 our, and our administration was in constant communication with other facilities. We wanted to make sure that everything with the CDC, our epidemiologists, uh, was up to date with everything that was going on around the country and we were doing everything possible that could be done. And, and we have been. We've, been. we've been ahead of the game, fortunately, and, and are happy. Sarasota Memorial Hospital has been reaching out to the community now that elective surgeries have resumed, saying that it's safe to come back, they shouldn't delay care. Why is it so important that people get their medical care now? You know, when someone has a medical condition, you know, depending on the medical condition, sometimes you can get a day, sometimes you can delay it a week. But now we're into it, into, you know, we're getting into the six, seven week mark where people may have been delaying their health for six or seven weeks. Now you're starting to get into the time where is it safer to delay or is it safer to get treated? And and I'm very, very comfortable right now that the hospital at all ends are, are, are performing uh, every day, whether they're COVID or they're non-COVID patients. Are, the number of patients we admit are, are, are minimal with COVID and, and the non-COVID patients are still being treated regularly. We've said if we're gonna do elective procedures and elective admissions, we had to make sure we put all the safety checks in place to make sure it was safe. For example, the same thing as the employees, every person that comes into the building has to have a mask. Every person that comes into the building has to have temperature checks. Every person that might be at risk for during, that needs an elective surgery, uh, we make sure that, that everybody's protected around them. We have kept our visiting policy in place intentionally we want to limit the number of people in in the building to the minimal possible uh, but we want all the necessary equipment the rooms the the processes in place so it is safe for the patient i worry more that they're going to delay their procedure and harm themselves uh, because of fear and that fear um, is, is truly just they don't understand the process that we've put in place to make it a safe to safe facility and a safe um, procedure. And I think it's important to point out that the hospital hasn't just been treating COVID-19 patients during the time that elective surgeries were postponed or canceled. I mean, there were plenty of people still coming in for emergent procedures, correct? Absolutely. We've done probably 3,000 emergent or urgent procedures during this whole thing. Uh, every day, the operating rooms had patients. Uh, patients were admitted for pneumonias, non-COVID pneumonias. People were admitted for appendicitis. Um, people were admitted for their for their medical illnesses through this whole process. You didn't seem to hear about it because our focus is, you know, and in, in, was always about COVID. Um, but certainly, the, our daily work has been our daily work. There's been some talk of the possibility of a second surge of COVID-19, perhaps in the fall or winter. How would the hospital handle that kind of resurgence? You know, we're, we've talked about that, and, and I feel we're ready for that. You know, no one knows how they're going to react in, an, in a certain situation, but I feel like we, we have more knowledge now. We're, it's actually better now than it was six weeks ago. We know our, what we need for equipment. We know what we need for isolations and ventilators. We know what we need to limit access uh, into the hospital and to expand access. We can do that quickly. We know how to communicate quickly with all the parts of the hospital, with all the people of the hospital. Everybody now has been working together so quickly 
that we are very nimble at making changes. If we have to make changes, we can we can do that quickly. And I feel very comfortable that that as things change, we will change. We we've, we've stayed above this uh, as you know for the last since it started in, in early February when we started our first discussions. And I and I feel strongly that we will continue to follow that. Uh, whatever happens, we will will be ready. Now that patients are coming back to the hospital, you talked about some of the measures in place to keep staff and patients safe, but how can patients be sure that they're safe to come back? What do you say to community members when they say to you, should I really be coming to the hospital? If you're sick, you need to be there. If you're sick, there, if you're sick, you really need to be there. If you have a medical condition, you really need to be there. What I don't wanna see is I don't wanna see someone delay something that's preventable, delay a medical condition that that's preventable. I just think it's out of fear, but the fear is not a justified fear. I go to work every day. I mean, I'm exposed every single day, potentially, but I'm very comfortable with the precautions in place. I'm very comfortable that our daily operations, as I walk through those hallways, that I'm safe in those hallways of the hospital. I don't have any concern at all. Um, you know, and I feel that the nurses of all the nurses that have gone through and, and, and taking care of all the ICU patients, they're, they're safe, they're comfortable with their work, they're, they're awesome, and they have not, uh, they have not um, acquired COVID in the ICU from one of their patients. I think it's a very strong indicator that, that the hospital is a very safe place. So what has Sarasota Memorial Hospital learned from this pandemic so far that you think could be applied if there is that second resurgence or to future pandemics or viruses that we see? I think we've learned how to communicate. I think we've learned how to step up our operations quickly if we have to make changes uh, in procedures, if we have to make adjustments in, in bed placement, if we have to um, make any particular changes in a part of the hospital, we can do that very quickly, very safely. We've actually united with our other hospitals in the area. We've, it's allowed us to help, you know, our, our, our communication with the county health department, with the state has never been better than it has been now. We've worked together on a lot of testing sites uh, with the county health department. I think our communication right now is, is the best it's ever been, and I think this Unfortunately, this pandemic is not a good thing, but it actually has brought us together to work together better. In your position as chief medical officer, what has it been like for you to watch this unfold and watch the response? It's, it's, been, it's been an eye-opener. It's been an eye-opener to see how things can change overnight um, in healthcare and in, in society and the community. And we do want to get back into that norm and we want to do it cautiously. Um, I've been proud of how people have responded in a crisis. Do you think it's really possible that we'll go back to a normal before the COVID-19, or do you think we're going to have a new normal post-COVID-19? It'll be a new normal. It'll be a new normal. I think vaccinations, when vaccinations are out there and, and regular ability to test in a doctor's office is out there, we'll be at that new normal. I think we're going to always be cautious. Um, I'll be happy when we reach that new normal. And uh, any final thoughts about COVID-19 or the response at Sarasota Memorial Hospital? At this point, I just want to thank everybody in the front lines for all that they've done. I really do. Even the community, the, the community unity of sharing and, 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 and I, I'm just grateful for the way everybody's responded. The healthcare people, the people from the community helping the healthcare people, everybody stepping together um, to help each other. It's been a wonderful thing. Uh, having a crisis is not a wonderful thing, but the way people responded to the crisis has really been been a, a great a great thing. Dr. Fiorica, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So thank you everyone who has joined us for this important episode of HealthCast. For more information about COVID-19, please visit smh.com slash COVID-19 to get the latest news from Sarasota Memorial Hospital. Thank you for joining us today. For more information, please visit smh.com. Follow us on your favorite social media network. <laughs>